Howdy and good evening. It's uh, Sunday evening, about 7 o'clock here in Rygate, Montana, and I'm sitting out on my front porch watching three head of horses graze. I got cats and dogs and everything around me. And uh, the reason I'm trying something new. So I just found out that my trip to Canada next week has been canceled due to COVID. I was going there to work uh, in the feedlot alley for five days and that's gone and and also we lost our uh, NCBA's stockmanship and stewardship in Vail, Oregon. We're still on for Kentucky so if I want to continue to present ideas and throw things out there which I guess I do I don't know I guess it's up to you if you want to listen to them or not so I thought I'd try this uh, front porch stuff and uh, one of my favorite songs is the front porch song and uh, so maybe this will be something like that well what I want to talk about is the COVID I had a friends that are sick kind of my age somewhere in there and then it's younger people getting sick and really really sick so this thing's getting serious and I thought it would get serious again I didn't know it was going to get this serious but uh, last year Last year when everybody started changing, I said, I don't think it's over yet. And I watch this happen in feed yards. And I guess I look at a lot of things. I was at a feed yard in uh, Nebraska, Lexington here three, two or three months ago. And I went around with the manager after I was done working and he, uh, he said something real smart. He said, uh, when you have one of these feed yards, and this is a large yard, 40, 50,000 head yard, you just have to face the fact that this is a cesspool of disease with these animals this close and this tight and the way they are. And that, that really, and then you have to manage according to that. And this is why we have to have such good health protocols and hopefully buy cattle coming into the feed yard, this cesspool of disease. You better have them pretty healthy coming in and with a good immune system and uh, healthy and the right condition so they can fight off those diseases and sicknesses and uh, continue on to be healthy through the whole process. I kind of think about that same thing with our human population right now. It got me to thinking maybe that's where we're at. And uh, this is kind of a serious subject to kind of discuss, but there's people dying and getting sick and being affected for the rest of their lives. So I think people ought to take a look at it. And so if I think about that feedlot condition, the tighter and closer animals or humans get, and the less their immune system is able, able to take care of things, well, the tougher it's going to be to fight those things off, and that's when you have these breaks and all these things. Well, that's kind of what we are with this COVID deal. And I don't know how to say this without offending some folks or whatever, but it's the truth and we better start facing up to the facts. And first of all, I don't think people eat right. And so our nutrition, especially when I go where, especially like a feed yard, I go and watch those guys that work in feed yards and gals and they work long, hard hours, their nutrition, they have a terrible breakfast of donuts and junk food. And then they have a terrible lunch of junk food. And I don't know what they have at supper. But the sedang tire, they probably don't want to eat, and half of them are overweight, working their butts off and their nutrition. And then the other thing that I think is happening with a lot of us is uh, hydration. And I think half the population walks around with not enough drink or not enough fluids in their system, and they're dehydrated. The nutrition isn't there, and they don't eat the right foods to keep them healthy and feeling good. And then uh, it just lets us get into this situation where a lot of people are getting sick and if you get sick and you're already weak it's got the whammy up on you some people that get COVID that are healthy and have a good immune system they'll get it it won't affect them too much and then they go on to life and they've got the immunities and just like a feedlot steer or heifer they survive it and, and go on and prosper so I think everybody really needs to look at our lifestyle slow things down get lots of rest, get lots of good nutrition, and um, I'm going to go back to the uh, diet. And I, I eat 
when my wife's here, I eat for taste. And she's a great cook. And she cooks things that are really, really good to eat. When I'm here, I eat to survive. And it's pretty much salami sticks, uh, <laughs> Uh, beef, salad, cheese, water, coffee, and then uh, eggs and some kind of beef in the morning I, or breakfast sausage. And uh, so I'm on, on a pretty real, real low-carb diet when I'm by myself. When I get on the road, I love to eat. but uh, So I'll have hamburgers and I'll have whatever they're having, but I stay pretty, pretty true to my low-carb diet and eat a lot of meat or protein and salads and that kind of stuff and I used to weigh consistently 20 pounds more than I do now when I wasn't very strict and I was always fighting around 225 or so 220 225 and now I'm always kind of my benchmark is 200 pounds of course I I weigh myself when I, I have an overnight stand and a shrink and I I weigh myself with just my underwear on so it's not it's a real true weight and uh, <laughs> Does somebody want to buy on that? So I try to keep it as low as I can. But that 200 pounds is where I want to be. And that's kind of where I stay if I follow and eat right. And I don't know if that matters or not, but sure, I sure feel better. And I think it's very, very important for my job where I'm, I have to be fairly athletic to do my job properly and right. And I just feel so much better. And I, I really like it when I'm, I feel better when it, at 200 pounds than I do at 225. And uh, I don't know if I that's just in my mind or not, but uh, I sure like it a lot, and I think that's a big part of it. When I go to Mexico, uh, I was there, and I got a haircut, and the guy sure made me wear a mask, and I asked him why the uh, pandemic, the uh, coronavirus, was so much worse in Mexico, and he said it was because the obesity, and I think it attacks obesity a little bit more. About to get a cat fight going here, or something. My barn cat came down to visit me, and then this cat with the funky ears that he's here, he might come in the picture. He he wants to fight everybody. He's a mean tongue cat, so but I like him. So anyway, I think everybody really needs to think about their nutrition, how we're eating, what kind of foods we're eating, and the, and make sure you're getting plenty of vitamins and minerals. And uh, you know that's a big debate nowadays to take vitamins or not. And a lot of doctors say no, it's a waste of money. But why would we give our cattle mineral? Now it is a waste of money if you're giving them mineral that they don't need. So maybe you ought to test yourself and test your cattle to see what's needed and blood tests. I take a blood test once a year and I just took one here not too long ago and uh, I was a little short on vitamin D and I was actually kind of dehydrated and I drink a lot of water, probably too much coffee. So, but I think it's uh, very important as we uh, progress in the future, you know, Sitting here where I'm sitting, looking out at the rims, and uh, Chief Joseph came right through this country on his way trying to escape into Canada, and they camped right here in this valley. And, uh, you know, in those days, in the Chief Joseph days, and the Native American days, people were really spread out. And then the trappers and everybody come right through this part of the world. The, the Muscle Shell River is just a quarter of a mile over, an eighth of a mile over to my right here. People were spread out. And then out in the country now, we're getting more and more and of course it's 60 miles to Billings from here and I go there you know once or twice a week if I have to and then you're in the uh, CAFO or the concentrated animal feeding area of Billings and Rye Guide's not too bad I go to the store here about once or twice a week and there's three people in there so it's not it's not the feedlot or the concentration of the big cities of course when you get on an airplane I got a I got a uh, text message after my trip from North Dakota last week that I was exposed to COVID and I think probably somebody on an airplane turned it in that they that was on my flight turned it in they had COVID and that just uh, so they sent me a text message that I was exposed to COVID now I've had it I've had COVID I was tested for it last uh, fall I guess it was or last winter I don't know last spring sometime I had I had coronavirus and I was quarantined for a couple weeks up at the ranch by myself that was good and then I have two rounds of vaccinations I had to get the shots the vaccinations to go to Canada which I gladly did and I think that's a smart thing to do so anyway that's some thoughts and I don't know if anybody wants to hear my thoughts or not I can't 
know why, but at least it'll get you to thinking and give you something to argue about. So I'm going to do some of this. I uh, I don't know. We'll just see where it goes. I see on YouTube there's lots of folks that do these kind of things, and and they have a lot of people following and watching. And I'm not going to beg anybody to watch me or do it. If there's five of you want to watch it, well, that's all right. Maybe my mother is one of them. <laughs> And uh, if not, that's all right too. But I, I think there's some things that, when I watch these things, it gives me a chance to get my mind working and thinking. And uh, being as I've been exposed to a lot of different things in the world, from feedlots to bucking horses to bulls and dairies and ranches and uh, auctions and all that stuff, I, I have a little bit more uh, places where I've, learn to think about things from so we'll try it out and see how it works hope you enjoy it and get yourself healthy and we'll get through this deal